Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are going to go over the control setting once and for all. I will not make any other video on control setting because this is going to be the one stop shop for anyone who wants to understand MSFS 2024 controls. And the goal of this video is so that you can set up these controls and never ever get into this menu again. I've made a previous video on this as well, uh, but that was just first or second day of release. So I was not fully aware of how the whole system is working. But now I think I am fairly confident and aware about this whole thing. So I'll try to explain it in the best way possible and uh, try to make sure that you don't have to get into this menu ever again. So with that, in this video, we are going to go over each and every device step by step. Um, I leave a timestamp for all the devices and uh, you can either watch the whole thing or just follow the timestamps. It is going to be a long video, so make sure you grab a coffee, lunch, dinner, whatever and uh, buckle up. I'll also give some inputs on how this system can change. So if you guys want to create a post on the forum, we can probably upvote and hopefully Microsoft will listen to it. Now with that out of the way, I would highly appreciate if you guys could leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, you can check out all my other videos and I'm, I'm sure you'll find a lot of them helpful. So I would appreciate if you guys could do a couple of clicks for me. It's free. So thank you again for all the love on the previous uh, 2024 videos and uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start with the mouse first. But before that, I'll give you some background on what we are working with here. So I have the Cessna 172 Skyhawk selected. There's also a filter button here, which will by default be set to none. So that means that all the controls, whether they're assigned to the mouse or not, will show up here in these respective categories. So for example, radio, ADF, you'll see that none of these are assigned, but you will still be able to see them in case you want to assign any of that to mouse. Okay. Now, when you click on it once, you will see that it shifts to assigned. That means anything that is assigned to the mouse will now show up here. So these none and assigned filters are the only ones that I use. Let's not even care about what this essential is. Okay. We'll keep it simple. Ignore essential completely. Throughout this video, we'll only be switching between none and assigned because those two are the only ones that are useful. You'll see that we have general controls. We have airplane controls and we have specific 172 Skyhawk controls. So general controls are anything like cameras. Um, you'll see that if we, if we go here, multiplayer, communication tools, camera, VR, menu, player character, all of these are general controls. Airplane controls are anything that has to do with the airplane. Autopilot, brakes, instruments and systems, lights, flight control surfaces, radio, all of these power management, landing gear, all of these are airplane controls. Now I'm explaining this, but you don't necessarily need to know what goes into airplane controls and what goes into general controls. Now the last one here is specific Cessna 172 controls. Now you'll see that most airplanes don't have specific controls, but this is generally made to differentiate between Boeing and Airbus. So for example, a Boeing aircraft would have a toga switch, right? But the Airbus will not have a toga switch. They only have detents. When you are in a Boeing aircraft, there will be specific Boeing 737 MAX controls that will show up here in power management, which will not even show up for any other airplane. And that is exactly why you have this specific one 72 Skyhawk controls, same way you'll have specific controls for each aircraft, does not necessarily mean that all of those aircrafts have some con specific controls assigned to them. It just means that there might be some aircrafts, like for example, the A330, A320, which have their own specific controls like detents and uh, 737 MAX, which has its own specific control, like having the toga switch, right? We'll get into that. Okay, so now that we are done with some background, so for the mouse, I would advise that you leave the general controls of mouse to mouse 2024 traversal and you also leave the airplane controls for the mouse to mouse 2024 planes because you will see that our goal is for the mouse to not interfere with any flight control surfaces and if you switch to assigned here you will see that most of the mouse switches or uh, uh, axes are assigned only to mostly camera controls right in flight ui panel dme so it's 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 not assigned to any flight controls. It's just assigned to interacting and looking around and stuff like that, which is completely fine. Now it may be a little bit different than 2020. So you can always switch to assign and then assign different things as you want. But I would say just leave it alone and get used to the 2024 controls because we are going to use this sim for like five, six years now. Right. So just get used to this 2024 general and airplane controls. There's not much here. As you can see, I can I can finish this list in like three scrolls. So I'm sure you can get used to this. And uh, for a specific 172 Skyhawk controls, just leave it at none. It doesn't matter. Just leave it at none. So the last thing we need to do on the mouse is hit this settings button and apply to all aircraft. Hit this settings button and apply to all aircraft because we don't want to touch this section ever again. This is going to stay exactly the same 
whether you fly 737 max whether you fly the 172 doesn't matter helicopters everything it stays exactly the same so the mouse is complete now let's move on to keyboard okay so the next one here is keyboard now so when you open the keyboard section you'll be welcomed with keyboard 2024 traversal and keyboard 2024 planes and uh, as usual we'll shift to assigned now for keyboard you have a couple of options here so let's talk about airplane controls first and then we'll go to general controls so for airplane controls you have a couple of options one is you leave it on keyboard 2024 planes where there's a lot of bindings that have changed completely or second one is you well you have three options so first one is leaving on 2024 planes where a lot of bindings have changed second one is you switch it to 2020 planes so that the bindings go back to what you guys are used to on 2020 and the third option is what i'm going for is completely disabling the airplane controls because if you look at 2020 planes or 2024 planes either of those right there are a lot of functions here for example increase flaps extend flaps decrease flaps toggle spoilers aileron roll left and right. i am not using my keyboard to fly the airplane so i don't care about any of these controls to stay on the keyboard and 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 when i go to none you will see that all of those controls go away now everything that's left for the keyboard to do is basically just uh, just walk around stuff and then camera related stuff atc panel things like that i've basically taken the uh taken the freedom away from the keyboard to control my plane at all which is exactly what i want and which is exactly what people uh who have some hardware to do all of this would want but there again if you do not have a throttle quadrant and a yoke and a bunch of stream decks and stuff to control things you might want to stay on either 2024 planes uh profile or i think most people would like to stay on the keyboard 2020 planes so i hope that's i hope that clears out stuff right if you go to none you will see that everything related to airplane will go away only things that remain here are your camera controls if you go to 2024 you'll have new set of uh, bindings if you're getting used to that that's fine as well if you don't have hardware to control your airplane related stuff then you can stay on keyboard 2020 planes which i think most people would choose and the bindings will be exactly the same as what you had before except maybe these ornithopter stat afterburner these are probably new i'm not sure but you get the point so airplane controls is cleared out you have three options here i have chosen to keep it at none now for general controls right so for general controls uh, you will see that you either have an option to go to 2020 traversal or you have an option to stay on uh, 2024 traversal so all these camera bounds and all of that they basically come under general controls and um, aileron flaps and whatever all of that falls under airplane controls here the option that i have chosen to go with is i am the most used to uh, being on 2020 profile so I like how all the load custom camera and uh, fixed camera and all that, all those shortcuts were in 2020 and I'm the most used to that. So I either stay on that or duplicate that profile and change anything that I want on that. Only minor changes, right? Everything else remains the same. For example, loading your custom cameras to set up uh, to set up your wing views and stuff. All of that remains same as it was in uh, um, in 2020. By the way, if you haven't watched that video on the camera system, you can go check that out. I think that will help you out in setting custom camera views and stuff. So yeah, here you only have two options, 2024, 2020. I think most people would like to choose to be on 2020 or customize the 2020 profile and build a master keyboard profile just like I have done and just made minor changes to it. So I hope that cl that clears a lot of stuff out. Now, specific 172 Skyhawk controls, don't care about it. Leave it at none. It doesn't matter. So that concludes the keyboard section. Now we'll move on to controllers. Okay, so the next one is controller. Now, I'd recommended using controller for camera system on 2020 as well. And I have a video for 2020. I have made a separate video for camera system using a controller on 2024. I would still recommend it's just 15 20 dollars make sure you get yourself a, a, a nice controller i think that will completely change the way you interact with cameras and stuff in in game so with that out of the way uh for camera you'll be welcomed with this screen where you have gamepad 2024 traversal you have gamepad 2024 planes and then specific uh skyhawk controls simple as that leave the specific airplane controls to none even for the controller i'll tell you where it's necessary and i've touched on it before but for now just for controller mouse and keyboard just leave them to none now if you shift to the assigned mode here you will see that the ca the controller is assigned to some camera functions which fall under general controls but then the controller by default is also assigned to some airplane controls which fall under this section so while you are moving your camera with your controller your airplane is going to start going on and i'm sure a lot of you guys have faced that problem 
where you're trying to just move around the cockpit, but then your rudder is getting activated or your or your joysticks moving all around in the airplane. So to avoid that from happening, on keyboard I said that you have a couple of couple of options to to keep either the uh, 2020 controls or switch to 2024. Here I strongly strongly recommend just change this to none so that anything to do with the airplane flight controls will be completely out of the way you want to use the gamepad or the uh, controller here only for your um, only for your camera stuff camera related stuff right unless you're actually flying the airplane with the gamepad which is probably xbox users but i'm sure most of you are on pc and you just want the controller to not fly the airplane you probably have a yoke or some joystick or something that is being used to fly the airplane so just change this to none coming to general controls now this is where i'm going to again just recommend you to watch the camera video this is not about uh, how you set up your cameras and stuff this this is about how you set up your uh, settings window so i would say that start from gamepad 2024 traversal and uh, assign anything that you feel uh, should be different compared to the profile that you already have here i wouldn't advise starting from a fresh profile and then assign everything i'm sure you can do that it'll just take you more time because i think gamepad 2024 already has most of the things correct and intuitive you might just have to change a couple of things like i did in my camera video and you should be good to go so that's what i've done here i have basically uh, duplicated this profile and created a master profile for my gamepad uh, which only controls camera and pause and stuff like that drone it controls my drone, controls my external view. Um, you'll see slowing and all of that. But again, most of these, like I would say 99.9% .9 of these controls were already assigned and they were just fine. I had to change maybe a couple of them here and there. So I'll leave that to you. But the advice here would be to start from Gamepad 2024 and change a couple of things and create your own master profile. And again, apply this to all aircraft, apply this to all aircraft, apply this to all aircraft. Just like we did for mouse and keyboard. I'm not sure if I forgot doing that, but yeah, keyboard also apply it to all aircrafts and airplane controls on keyboard apply to all aircraft so until this point now you will never have to touch your mouse keyboard and controller settings no matter what aircraft helicopter or whatever you fly okay now let's move on to the actual meat stuff all right so the next one is a joystick so you can have any joystick i have the win wing or some minor joystick you can have x56 you can have the hotas anything Okay, now on this one, the story is a little bit different. Depending on which joystick you have, you might start either from a none profile, so nothing exists. For example, for Ursa Minor that I have, nothing exists here. I would strongly suggest starting from a blank profile on the joystick because you don't want Microsoft Flight Sim to force you into assigning any controls to your joystick that you're not used to, right? And there's not a lot of things to set up on the joystick, so I would definitely highly recommend just start from a blank profile, okay? So what we are going to do here is go to uh, here. There's no point of going to assign because we have a blank profile. So nothing is assigned, right? So on none, you need to start assigning each and everything. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, so first thing would be aileron axis. Uh, so let's look for that aileron axis right here. So I'll click on that, assign the axis that I want on the joystick to the aileron. And I'll create this as a master profile again, because this is not going to change from aircraft to aircraft, right? You want the joystick uh, aileron axis as aileron axis for all the aircraft, right? So you would click apply to all aircrafts and hit OK. So this will be your master profile for your joystick. Now, since you have only assigned the airplane control, uh, that's the only one that gets created. OK, so the next one we'll assign is our uh, elevator axis. We'll assign our elevator axis, which is right here. Let's do that. OK. So that automatically gets saved to the airplane controls master profile that we have already created. Now, the next thing I want to assign here is autopilot off. Okay. So that is going to go on this red button that I have on the joystick. So I clicked on that button again, it gets saved automatically to the master profile. Now, the next thing I want to assign is look left and look right under cockpit view. So cockpit view, look left is going to be my hat switch. I'll click on look left. This will go to general profile. So again, I would create a master general profile for this one as well and apply to all aircrafts because we don't want this to change from aircraft to aircraft, right? If you're flying an extra 300S, we still want our hat switch to do the same thing on extra 300S and also on, on a 172 if you are flying that with a joystick, right? So take on apply to our all aircrafts and then hit OK. So now we have a uh, master general controls and master airplane controls created for uh, the joystick. Um, so just like I did look left, I'll also do look right and that will be POE right switch. There's also another one which says cockpit view upper. 
cockpit view upper and that will be my POV switch up and then I'm assigning the bottom one to reset cockpit view because let's say I am on a weird view I can just hit that bottom uh, bottom POV switch and that will reset me to the flying view so that is it uh, I have a bunch of other buttons on on the joystick as well but I'm just I'm just demoing you how to assign some of them and then you can always search and assign any other buttons that you have to whatever you want to assign it to and they will automatically get saved to either general controls or airplane controls since we have saved this to all the aircrafts you will never have to touch this again so that completes our joystick setup the next one is rudder okay so even with the rudder the story is very simple here uh, you will be welcomed with a screen which either has some kind of profile or for me i'm using the wind wing metal rudder skywalker metal rudder pedal and I don't have any any default profile set up by Microsoft. Regardless of whether you have a profile or not, just like the joystick, I would advise that you set this up from scratch because there's only two or three controls that you really need to assign for the rudder. And uh, I would say it's it's way easier if you just if you just start from scratch. Now, obviously, there'll be people who fly helicopters as well, for which you might be removing springs from the rudder and you might want to set up a different profile for helicopters. So there's a couple of options here. You can either, um, if, you're, if you're not flying helicopters and only airplane, then you can apply your airplane controls profile to all aircrafts. But if you are flying helicopters, then, then you might want to create two profiles one for helicopters and one for airplanes okay so let's try to create a profile here uh, i would just look for rudder rudder axis which is right here and then i will move my rudder and then i will say i will call this as my master profile but for the rudder can't type today okay master profile for my rudder and I will apply this to all aircrafts because I, I, I do not fly helicopters so I want this to be applied to everything that I load in the sim okay set that hit ok and that will cre create a uh, create the uh, master profile for airplanes here now the only other thing I want to set is left and right brake here so left brake axis I'll push on my toe brake and then right brake axis I'll push on my right toe brake. Now, if you uh, if you cancel this and then click on assign, you will see that this is the only assignment that we have for rudder. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want my metal rudder pedals doing anything else on any aircraft. So again, we'll just hit apply to all aircraft just to be sure that that's what's happening. Uh, that makes it easy. That's, uh, that's all I have for the rudder pedals. Now this one is going to be hard, but I'll break it down for you so that you understand correctly. Okay, so the next one is throttle quadrant and everyone here will have different throttle quadrants. So it is really hard to make one video which will serve everyone. But at least what I've done is I've made uh, the Bravo throttle quadrant videos for single engine prop, for Airbuses, I'll make one for Boeing, for twin engine prop, things like that. So in this video, I'll just cover the basic concept of how things work and then hopefully this section of this video branches you out in those other videos that I've made where you can go and set it up exactly for different types of airplanes. When you first load this, you will either be welcomed with none on everything or you'll probably have some kind of throttle quadrant profile loaded depending on whether MSFS really detects your throttle quadrant or not. So when I loaded in, I had none on general controls and I had Bravo throttle quadrant 2024 planes on the airplane controls. Now this this will definitely not work for all of them so you have to duplicate this profile and then make a new make a new profile for single engine prop you have to make a new profile for airbus you have to make a new profile for boeing for helicopters everything is different right for twin engine props so this is where i believe you guys will spend the most time is setting up your throttle quadrant if you have a complex throttle quadrant like uh, the bravo so the concept is similar uh, I would say that leave general controls to none unless you have a throttle quadrant where you want to assign some switch to let's say reset, resetting cockpit view or something that belongs to general controls. But the concept remains the same. If you choose to assign something that falls under general controls, it will prompt you to make a new general controls profile and it will automatically send all of those assignments to general controls but i'll show you that for airplane controls i have duplicated this base profile and then created an airbus profile specific airbus profile specific single engine prop profile and specific i'll probably create another boeing profile and another uh, twin um, turbo prop profile you can create multiple profiles for different airplanes on this one and there's no way around it you will have to do that and for for specific controls uh, you would only set this for Boeing 
So I think that pretty much covers the whole concept of uh, Bravo Throttle Quadrant. I know I'm not going through a lot here, but that's just because I have separate videos already on how to set this thing up. If you have a simpler throttle quadrant, it'll probably be easier. Uh, just start from a fresh profile and set throttle one, throttle two, and, and whatever switches you have on it, and then you're done. So basically similar to the Ursa Minor joystick, set everything up. But once you're done with that, you will not have to touch this ever again. So with that, uh, let's move on to the final one which is our yoke okay so the final one is our yoke and the most important one right along with the joystick obviously if you just have a joystick you probably don't care about a yoke but i have a yoke to fly boeing and then i have a joystick to, fl to fly uh, things like S extra 300s and all the airplanes that that fly with the joystick so for the yoke again the concept overall is very similar to the joystick where i would advise you if you don't have a lot of buttons on the yoke i would advise you to just start from a fresh profile or let's say you have an alpha yoke the honeycomb alpha yoke you probably have a default profile which has all those switches correctly assigned then sure start from that one but what i have done here is i have basically just just started from a completely uh, new profile on airplane controls here so what i would do is uh, let's start from airplane controls and I would apply this to all aircrafts because even if I'm flying with a joystick on extra 300s or any other aircraft that uses a joystick, I don't care if my yoke would do the same thing that the joystick is doing, right? The easiest for me is just to apply this to all aircrafts. I look for aileron axis here and then make a new profile, which will be called master and then uh, apply to all aircraft. Like I said, doesn't matter if, if the yoke is operational even on aircraft where you're using your joystick and the next one will be uh, elevator so elevator access and i will scan this and that gets saved to our master profile here and i think that is pretty much it i don't want my tca uh, yoke to control anything else re uh, with respect to airplanes i just want to use it for elevator and aileron and i'm talking only from the airplane side i still want to use the other switches for like camera movement and stuff like that but that will fall under general controls one more thing if you have if you have a trim switch on it you might want to set it to elevator trim up and trim down but i use the trim wheel on my throttle quadrant to to trim the aircraft so i, I uh, i'm not assigning the trim uh, stuff on on the yoke now for general controls to set up the general controls i would advise that you just go temporarily to none here and then filters to assign and that will show you all the general controls that are assigned to your yoke so if you want to change anything here make sure you change it and then uh, and then just create a duplicate profile uh, and name it master and then you can keep that for all your airplanes as well once you're done with that setting, you can again switch this to master and uh, that's what will be saved for all your aircrafts along with this one as well. So hope that makes sense and uh, that concludes the yoke section as well. Now in the next section, I will tell you how we can change this controls menu. Okay, so here's some recommendations uh, to Microsoft um, and don't skip away. Uh, I, I think... I think you probably would also think about it more as I, as I talk about these recommendations and you'll probably have more inputs. So leave them down in the comments and we can have a, a nice discussion down there on what else can be changed and probably make a, uh, make a comprehensive post out of this on what needs to change on this sim to make it, uh, make it more user friendly. So one of the first things that I want to change on this uh, UI is that when I'm clicking on something, let's say for example on the mouse, right? If I'm clicking on the right mouse button, it should show a white kind of activation thing. It used to do that on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I don't know why they disabled that. But if I press the right mouse button, it should either show a white, like a white background on whichever task is assigned to the right mouse button. That will at least give me a clear idea on which tasks are getting activated if I click on something. The second change that I would like to make is for that, let me go to the yoke. Now on the yoke, if I go to hardware settings, I basically cannot check whether my um, axes are working or not because this ball doesn't move. I'm trying to move all the axes, but this ball doesn't move. Look at that. I'm doing everything I can. This ball doesn't move. So why is this basic thing broken in this? Why can't you, why can't you allow us to see the sensitivity? 
have some uh, and this used to work in microsoft license 2020 i'm not sure how this got broken this used to work just fine this ball used to move as i move my yoke and i can check like okay half movement on my yoke is leading to maybe like 25 percent so good okay so i want to keep that sensitivity something like that right here i i can't tell i just can't tell so i don't know how to adjust my sensitivity apart from just like trial and error and then the third change i would recommend is under filters right just like you have none and assigned, which is really helpful, right? Essential, I don't care. None and assigned is really helpful. Just like that, I want a general airplanes and specific tab here as well so that I can exactly see which controls are general controls, which controls are airplane controls and which controls are the specific airplane controls. So these are just some of the, uh, some of the things that I, uh, I really wanted to point out. And now uh, on to the last part of this video where I promised you to show the specific controls, right? So, for that one, I'm going to switch to the Boeing 737 MAX. And again, this this UI is also very weird. Uh, it was just fine on 2020 where you could select airliners, you could select prop, you could select twin prop. But now they've, they've, e they either have airplanes, they have helicopters, but no sections in airplanes. So I basically have to just cycle through and find my airplane. Like, oh, where's, uh, where's the 172? Where's it? Where's it? I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, oh, sh I, I skipped it. No, let me go back. Like, what is this? Just have a, a drop down like we had before where you can select uh, airliners, twin prop, single engine prop, whatever, right? That will make life really easy. I just saw the 737 Max. Now I can't find it. Ah, oh, okay. There it is. Huh. Save and back. Okay. Okay. So for this one, right? Uh, for the Boeing 737 Max, if you go to power management and if you go to throttle, you will see that the, that the, that the options that you can assign on, on the throttle are completely different compared to if you select the Airbus. On the Airbus, you won't have this engine one toga, engine two toga and stuff like that. So the thing is, if you click on this, uh, well, I'm on the wrong device. Let's go to the throttle. And then if you click on engine one toga set, and let's say I click one random button here, let's say maybe this one. So then it will tell you to create a new 737 MAX profile. So this is what specific aircraft controls is. There are some aircrafts which will just have completely different controls in terms of uh, the way it flies and things like that, right? It, it might have specific controls. Like for example, you cannot use a 737 for a skydive mission, right? So those smaller airplanes might have some specific controls that are very, very specific to that airplane. So whenever you try to assign that control uh, to any of your devices, you will see that you will be prompted to create a specific profile. This is just a uh, this is just a teaser into what specific 737 profile is, what what specific profile is. Uh, but I'll make a separate video on setting up the 737 Max because if I try to make that because if I try to include that in this one, then this video will just be too long. And this is about summarizing the whole controls menu in one video. So I think that's it for this video. And hopefully that helped you guys out. And uh, if it did, please make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll not disappoint you. I'll not waste your time. Get straight to the point and make sure that you uh, keep getting these kind of helpful videos from my channel. And you can always unsubscribe if you ever think that this channel becomes a waste of your time. Okay. So see you in the next one and hope you guys have a fun flying weekend.